lovely, lovely imps. Today, we have to talk about atheism. Today, we have to talk about Christianity. And today, we have to talk about religion. There has been a lot of hubbub around Christianity, atheism, and religion. And uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit because I have a lot, lot, lot of thoughts about these subjects. Um, I should open this for all of my new viewers, of which there are many. My channel has been growing a lot in recent days. Uh, I say this frequently, so I'm sorry for the regulars who hear this all the time. But I grew up, I literally just said it a few minutes ago, but that was, you know, if you're watching this segment, now I'm rambling. Anyway, point is, uh, <laughs> I grew up in a extreme Christian cult. Um, I spent uh, somewhere around 12 years with my family in this cult of my young life. And I left the cult uh, around the age of 20 or so was when I left the cult and I was still a Christian for a little while and then I stopped being a Christian entirely. Um, and oh, I know, there's the shocker. I don't believe in God. <gasps> oh my God, the great reveal. I accidentally revealed it too early. I don't believe in God. I generally consider myself an atheist these days. Um, but I have a very, very strong background in Christianity. When I was a Christian, I was a very devout Christian. So, uh, you know, Christians who uh, uh, love to kind of say, oh, you must not have been very faithful if you're no longer a Christian. No, I was very faithful. I have read the Bible cover to cover three to four times in my life. I'm not sure about the exact number because there were times where I jumped around. But it, I used to have a daily ritual of always reading at least one chapter of the Bible. Often I would read more. I would constantly go to uh, Bible studies and church services. At the peak of our involvement in the cult, my family would uh, go to church three times a week, once on Wednesday and twice on Sunday, which is a lot of time to spend at church every single week. In fact, uh, one of the earliest ways that I even started getting distance from the cult before we even left, before I even left the cult was in my uh, junior and senior year of high school, I started having to ask my parents to let me not go to church as much because otherwise I wouldn't be able to make it into college because I couldn't keep up with the amount of school work going to church three times a week. So once I became, you know, a little bit more serious about school, um, I, I was able to like sort of get a special exception to stay home and work on homework while my family went to church. I knew the Bible and still do uh, very, very, very well. Now, my, obviously the Bible is an enormous book, so nobody can know everything about the Bible, but I know it very, very well. I also have spent a lot of time in my life thinking about religion, um, thinking about Christianity, and thinking about the nature of belief. When I became an atheist, um, it was a very logical process. The, uh, but it wasn't a, a, really a single incident. I'll, okay, there was a single incident in which I realized I no longer believed in God anymore, um, which was I had been arguing with a friend of mine about religion for hours upon hours upon hours. And this was a series of arguments that I'd had with this friend over the course of months. We always would argue about religion. We'd go back and forth. Um, we had very different views on religion. And I had been challenged on the idea that might makes right, which Basically, if I can take you through this argument, the argument that ultimately ended my faith, um, was my friend had, had asked me whether I believed that morality predated God or whether, or rather, uh, God had created morality. And of course, being a Christian, I stated that I believed that God being omnipotent and all knowing and infinite, 
that God had created morality. And then my friend said, well, if that's true, if God created morality, then God is responsible for the entire state of the world. And also you are ultimately arguing that the only thing that matters with regard to morality is power. Because if morality does not pre-exist God, then God is simply an entity that uses his power to impose his own morality on everyone else. Ultimately, you simply believe that might equals right. And that might sound like a simple argument, but at the time, it stuck in me. Like it bothered me to an unbelievable degree, such that I actually kind of had to, I had to take a break from the conversation. And I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. Um, I actually went to the bathroom so I could take a break from the conversation. And while I was pissing, I realized that I no longer believed in God. That actually the things that I was arguing for, I simply didn't believe in. I didn't believe that might makes right. I don't believe that, uh, that God just being powerful makes that morality. I don't believe that, that a powerful entity should just be able to impose its will and that we all have to deal with that. And I never could go back from that moment. That moment was like the switch. Now, of course, there were a lot of other like moments that were leading that led up to that. There were a lot of other uh, moments of deep introspection that led to me coming to that conclusion. Um, I, I had a really pivotal emotional moment um, with regard to, uh, this was before I w had accepted that I was trans. Um, this was, you know, I was still quite young, but I had a friend who was gay and I really, really cared about this friend. And um, when she came out to me, she trusted me, even though I was a Christian, she trusted me enough to come out to me and tell me her story. And I couldn't find it in me to be anything but happy. All I could feel was happiness, even though I knew in my heart that my book, that, that my belief system should have led me to condemn her. Um, that was a very, important emotional moment that contributed to ultimately um, my loss of faith. That moment was huge, but I didn't lose my faith in that moment. I just decided in that moment that I must have misinterpreted the books of the Bible, that my belief must be wrong. So it was the beginning of doubt in my belief system. Um, and uh, Christians the Christian church, I shouldn't say all Christians, but cr the Christian church that I grew up in was very concerned about doubt. And uh, they, they, they always framed doubt as a sort of external factor, that Satan was the one who infused doubt, that the, uh, the, the world, the secular darkness of satanic energy was what infused doubt. But for me, that wasn't the experience I ended up having. It wasn't an external thing that happened. It was me. My friend came out to me and I couldn't find it in myself to condemn her. It wasn't something external. It was internal. And likewise, when I finally lost my faith, when I finally, like the faith switch turned off because I realized that my worldview was, in, was, was not workable, that my worldview was wrong, that I didn't believe in the worldview that I said that I did. That was also internal. It was never anything external, no matter how much I tried to, to uh, introspect or, or dig into it. Um, I say all of this because uh, atheism became a very important topic for me after I left the church, after I left my faith. Also, I should be clear, I left the church before um, uh, before I actually left Christianity. I, I 
Eve, right, sometime between the moment that I talked about where the gay friend came out to me um, and the moment that I stopped believing, I had already begun to formulate criticisms of the church that I grew up in, quite large ones. Um, let me tell another story. Uh, I know I usually reserve these types of stories for my longer form things, but I think this is important. Uh, I went to a church service at another church that was affiliated with the church that I grew up in, a big church. And when I went there, they had, uh, I, I noticed because I was in film school at the time, I, I, I went to film school, I never finished film school, but I went to film school. I noticed that they had cameras that cumulatively cost millions of dollars. Um, they were throwing a Christian themed Christmas festival uh, and uh, this festival in included them shipping in snow during hot weather so that people could uh, ski for Jesus and a bunch of other weird things like that. And while I was sitting there, I couldn't focus on the Bible study because um, all I could think about was the fact that while they were asking for people to donate to help starving children, which they do all the time, and as they were asking people to donate money, that all around me was millions of dollars of excess being used purely to generate profit for the church. The church didn't need million dollar cameras. It could have easily pre pre presented its teachings to just as many people with cheaper cameras, but they had million dollar cameras nonetheless. The church didn't need a multi-million dollar stage system, but they had it. The church didn't need to ship in snow. So I had already begun to doubt the church and had left this church before I even lost my faith. Yeah, skiing for Jesus. I'm not kidding you. That's like, it was something along those lines. I don't know if it was literally called skiing for Jesus, but it was something like that. It was a Christian themed winter festival thing. In, in hot weather, the church that I was visiting was in, uh, in Florida. It was in a hot state. So they shipped in snow. Yes, they literally shipped in snow. People are saying this, this sounds like the Righteous Gemstones. The Righteous Gemstones pulls from, uh, I don't know if the Righteous Gemstones pulls from the church I grew up in, but they pull from people who are in the same movement. Uh, the church I was, I, I was in is very much uh, in, in the same spirit as the Prosperity Doctrine movement. Uh, basically the type of people, you know, the, the preachers who preach about uh, private jets and they're like, you got to give us, they have their golden watches and all that shit. Anyway, let's not get too far off, okay? Um, so anyway, all of this is to say that I've given an incredible amount of thought to, to, to religion and I've had a huge amount of my life has been devoted to experiences involving religion, spirituality, um, belief in God. Um, and when I left the church and when I left Christianity, um, when I stopped believing, I became an atheist. And I've been an atheist ever since. I've never, since that time, I have always been an atheist. And I have, I have sort of touched other atheist adjacent beliefs. Um, though I have generally always considered myself an agnostic atheist, which uh, that has been sort of the prevailing position that I've, I've held, the prevailing label that I've, I've, I've been comfortable with since I left the church. Basically, the idea is atheism um, doesn't make any positive claims about the universe, but simply says, that you don't believe and you believe that there's reason there is you know there is evidence to say that the claims of certain religions aren't necessarily true but that of course you're not really particularly interested in proving the non-existence of god because that's not particularly scientifically possible you you can't prove a negative in that way oh yeah somebody was just asking about a saying that my church used to have um uh uh, Rioma asks, Demon Mama, what was your church's saying about doubt being like a fort wall having a door? Um, no, they used to, it was similar. It was a, an open mind is like a fortress with the front gates open. Uh, they were very anti the idea of an open mind. They believed it was a good thing to be closed minded. Um, and yes, doubt was a part of that, but it's actually generally a, it's a saying that goes against inquiry in general. It goes against curiosity in general. An open, an open mind is like a fortress with the front gates open. Um, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, that was the, that was a saying that was constantly repeated in my church. Constantly. Like I'm saying I'm I'm saying like they said it like often, very frequently. Um Yeah. Um that's a 40k quote. Uh, I think it's actually used by 40k because actual cults use that. They literally told you not to think for yourself. Yes, they were very bold about it. They would say, uh, they would call knowledge that wasn't from the Bible, the knowledge of man, the wisdom of man, um, meaning that it was useless. You should throw away the wisdom of man and you should only get knowledge from the church the teachings of the church and the Bible itself. That was a, they were very, very solid about that belief. Atheism became very important to me. And after I left the church, I dove very deep into uh, atheist uh, atheist thinkers. Uh, some of the, the, the ones that everybody will recognize, the Christopher Hitchens, the Richard Dawkins. Um, I even read two books by Sam Harris. This was before Sam Harris went like intellectual dark web. This was when he was just kind of, he mostly branded himself as like an atheist guy. Um, I used to watch Amazing Atheist. Um, uh, mo mostly I watched Matt Dillahunty um, and, and uh, uh, Zinnia Jones. If anybody remembers Zinnia Jones, those were two people who were very influential on me. Um, I used to watch uh, Rebecca Watson, all kinds of people, tons, tons of people uh, that I used to um, listen to that I found had a lot of interesting things to say that uh, were uh, inspiring. Because at the time, of course, I was dealing with two a two-front war with both the former church that I was involved with and my family who was still in the church. Um, I had... I had learned what it meant to be transgender and I was trying to transition, which my family was not okay with. And I had stopped believing in Christianity, which my family also very strongly didn't believe in. So this atheist content uh, of all the types that it took, videos and books and everything that I, podcasts and all that stuff was very, very important to me. Um, and uh, and very valuable to me. Um, and, and in some ways, I even, you know what, I'll even go so far as to admit this. I was a, I was a Reddit atheist for a while. I w spent time on Reddit. I posted on the R Atheism board. I found all their little memes funny and inspiring. It was very helpful to me having left a highly, highly ab abusive, um, uh, 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 church. Um, uh, Blablato asks, did you watch the debate with Bill Nye and that creationist guy? I believe his name is Ken Ham. And yes, uh, I did watch that debate. Um, also, uh, one of the most sort of infamous uh, anti-evolution debaters actually came to my church multiple times. And I was personally, uh, I had a personal like uh, a learning session with, uh, his name was um, Kent Hoven. He did it. He had a creationism theme park or something along those lines. Uh, and he came to my church and actually we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation about the Bible together. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I actually, I actually met him on multiple occasions and like I said, had a one-on-one -on -one session with him. Um, he's a really weird guy. Yeah. He's, he's a, infamous and he's also he also went to prison for massive tax fraud but yeah um uh let's talk about some other things um let's let's move this forward um i don't want to just spend my time talking because i'm going to be doing a video in the near future uh that's an update to my spiritual deconstruction for those of you who are interested in my full story with the cult i have a video up called demon mama's spiritual De deconstruction you can just search that video on youtube you'll find it very easily and i'm going to be doing an updated version uh with my with a bunch of my new thoughts very very soon i've been working on it a lot in the background when i'm off stream um but let's keep talking about what i want to talk about today um atheism has been very important to me and uh, one thing, one topic uh, that has become 
repeatedly uh, uh, controversial and also a to and also a topic that I have gone back and forth on is the topic of anti-theism. Um, anti-theism basically being a principled stance, I'm gonna try and frame this charitably, a principled stance against any uh, sort of claims about God or the supernatural or religious beliefs in general. Um, Anti-theism is a pretty broad term and people take it to mean a lot of different things, but I wanna be as charitable as possible to the anti-theist position. I am not an anti-theist generally. Um, however, before I, before I go too hard on anything or jump into anti-theism or explain why I'm not an anti-theist, I should be clear about something. Christianity in America, as a movement, Christianity is unfathomably toxic. And I genuinely believe that the American Christian movement, the conservative Christian movement, also sometimes referred to as Christian nationalism, sometimes referred to as Christian fundamentalism, um, this movement, I believe, is a actual danger to the planet. Not just to America, not just to countless young people and families who are victimized by the horrible, horrible behavior of their religious leaders. Um, I actually think this movement needs to be fought against extremely hard. Like, um, the, the, the Christian nationalism movement is a, and I don't say this lightly at all, it is a fascist movement. It believes in asserting a Christian worldview on everyone else by force. They believe that America needs to be turned into a Christian nation by force. And they believe that God allows them to do that in a very Machiavellian sense. They do not have uh, any reservations about what it will take for them to make America a Christian nation. Even though there are so many people in America who don't believe in Christianity, there are so many Christians in America who don't believe in that type of Christianity. Um, I also believe that there are a lot of very, very problematic religions, and I do believe those religions should be mocked, should be debunked, should be taken apart. However, there's been some problems that I've had with atheists recently, with atheism, anti-theism, recently that really have been getting under my skin and have actually um, been been making me pretty frustrated. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is that atheism has become incredibly cringe, okay? And I mean that in not just that, that's not just a personal judgment. That's just a general, a general read. Um, atheism became very obnoxious. Uh, blame this on social media, blame this on certain figures, um, but as many people who are aware of the atheist movement online especially, a lot of the atheist c content creators on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, etc. ended up becoming far-right reactionaries, which is a really weird thing to do if your position starts criticizing far-right reactionaries, but then you become a far-right reactionary, just not you don't like the Christian part, but otherwise you adopt all of their views. Um, that did a pretty major damage to the public uh, opinion of atheism. But also, atheism has another problem with a certain type of cringe that I think is really serious. And I want people to pay attention to what I'm saying here, especially if you're an atheist. And let me remind you again, I consider myself an atheist. I don't believe in God. I just can't. I don't believe there's a God. No, I've, I've thought about religion and different religions ever since I, you know, left Christianity. And I just don't, it just, it doesn't happen in my brain. I'm not convinced. I've, I've done all kinds of thought experiments. I've, I've studied all kinds of religious texts since I left the church. None of it sticks. None of it matters to me. I just don't believe in God. Um, and, uh, and so I'm 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 a pretty serious atheist. It's not like a not like I didn't, you know, explore other thoughts and other types of religions. I've done that pretty deeply. 
Um, but, uh, but there's this really big problem, okay, that atheism has, and it's smugness. It's cringe. It is the fact that atheists basically behave a lot like Christians, especially in America, in this very weird way, which is that basically a lot of people online, atheists online, who are outspoken, just, just listen to me for a second here. They are outspoken. They identify themselves as atheists. They are loud about the label. They're not just atheists at all. They are very loud about it. But their loudness basically amounts to them going like this, going, ha, you believe in God? How foolish and stupid you are. Ah ha. And now that's a very dramatic, I'm doing a cartoonish impression, but that's basically what it boils down to. It's a virtue signal. And th these people, a lot of these, I see this all the time. I've been watching arguments because um, part of the reason why I'm talking about this, a very small reason why I'm talking about this is that uh, in some circles near me, uh, some of the circles that I sort of associate with online, there has been a, somebody brought up a big topic of atheism and a bunch of people had opinions on it. And I've been going through lots and lots of comments. I've been reading lots and lots of social media posts that have come of this discourse. I wanted to make a video, which is what I'm doing right now, uh, that is not directly about the drama, but I want you to understand that it's informed by it. And I've seen an incredible amount of people who literally just they don't have anything else they take the time out of their day to be outspoken about atheism they take the time out of their day to make comments about atheism to identify as an atheist to go out of their way to engage with conversations about atheism and religion and all they have is smugness they don't have anything else sometimes they don't even know the arguments that like are good against a specific belief system like, one of the things that I see all the time is, um, this is specific, very, very common with American atheists, um, but American atheists will argue with somebody, um, who believes in a totally different religion than Christianity, but they will argue it only using arguments that fit for a very specific brand of Christianity. It's one of the most cringiest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like they'll be yelling at like some like like Buddhist or they'll be yelling at a at a uh, a pagan and they'll literally just use arguments about sky daddies and stuff like that and it's just like do you do you even know what you're do like do you know how cringe you're being? Like it is a level of cringe that's unbelievable. But also the smugness isn't actually helpful. It doesn't actually mean anything. And guess what? You're not actually moral, morally superior just because you don't believe in God. The atheist movement online convinced a ton of, of stupid half-witted idiots on the internet that they actually are morally superior beings just because they stopped believing in God. But guess what? You're not actually a better person just because you don't believe in God. You're not. It doesn't actually make you a better person. Tons of people don't believe in God and are giant pieces of shit. Now there's tons of ways in which God belief can motivate people to be pieces of shit. But the idea that you would become an atheist only to behave as though your atheism alone enlightens you above other people. It's very religious. It's in fact, it's almost indistinguishable. It's almost like you took off your, your cross hat and then you put on an A hat and then you bought all the A merchandise and you carry around the Hitchens book instead of the Bible like you just changed religions from uh, the religion that is called a religion to the religion that's not a religion. And I know that that's like an argument that a lot of theist people use is like, oh, you've just accepted a new religion. But if the fucking boot fits, the boot fits. I've seen this so much. And again, 
I assure you, I have been plugged into the atheist world for a very long time. For over a decade of my life now, I have been an atheist and I have been very plugged into those spaces. And this type of behavior is more common now than it was even during the Reddit atheism movement. These atheists who believe that just because they figured out that they don't believe in God, that that enlightens them as some sort of moral titan, it doesn't. In fact, um, the, the blistering confidence that you're a good person just because you don't believe in God or just because you don't believe in the supernatural is the exact thing, is one of the key pieces of the genetics that makes so many Christians and so many religious people vulnerable to becoming giant pieces of shit. It is a dogmatic belief. It is the dogmatic belief that some, some idea that you hold within yourself alone makes you a greater moral entity and not doing the work to understand an ethical worldview or to come to a moral worldview or to have a vision of a better world. The idea that just, oh, I realize that God doesn't exist. That makes me good. I'm doing good now. It is pathetic. It's cringe. It's horrible. And it's condemnable. Because it is no difference, ultimately. It's not completely, uh, it's not completely the same as the way that a lot of Christians behave. But it's the same in a lot of ways. It's very, very close. So that's like one of the biggest things is this cringe, this unbelievable cringe, this, this cringy behavior that is off-putting to people. Um, it is alienating, but also it's just hypocritical. It's, it, 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 it goes against the idea that you're supposedly putting forward by basically demonstrating that actually no god belief is not the thing that makes people behave poorly or or have bad worldviews and that's one of the reasons by the way that i'm not an anti-theist because i don't actually think that god belief is the operating piece i do believe that god belief can be a contributing factor but i want to point something else out which is that it's not just God belief. People do horrific things in the name of ideologies. People do horrific things in the name of products. You guys, have you guys not seen in the last few years the rise of fandom culture, the rise of stan culture? That these people aren't religious, they don't believe in God necessarily, but they are motivated by something that takes the shape of or the form of God. So this God belief, God belief in and of itself is not the thing that that makes or or damages the world. This is one of the reasons why I personally don't uh, adhere to anti-theism um, because I just don't think that there's an argument I don't think the argument holds that God belief is any worse worse than any other type of belief or that God belief in and of itself is disqualifying of other um uh, is disqualifying of rationality or anything like that um there's another thing that I really hate about atheists right now and this is another common argument that I saw um which is, and this is also common with anti-theists uh, that I've seen. Not all anti-theists, obviously, but a lot of anti-theists tend to bring this forward. Which is that they don't actually understand what religion means for people. And they don't understand how people engage with religion. I'm going to take a moment to explain this. There are many people who do not believe in a supernatural god. And some of you in chat right now might be might scoff at that or might be taken aback by that um, and go, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? They, how could you believe in God and not have it be supernatural? Well, as it turns out, if you weren't ignorant, if you took some time to actually dive into various beliefs on God and, and actually understand what you were grappling with, you would realize that actually... Um, 
a, a I believe it's referred to as pantheism is an incredibly common type of God belief. This was a, uh, this is a, a belief system that was heavily associated with uh, Baruch Spinoza. Um, uh, I believe it's his name, Baruch Spinoza. I always forget his first name. Right, I'm getting his first name right. Right, yeah, Baruch Spinoza. Um, Spinoza argued, uh, he was a believer in God, but his idea of God was a philosophical formulation. It was a definitional uh, uh, formulation that posited that God is existence itself, that uh, that that God is all things. It is the that God is the fundamental binding thing between all things. It is a non-supernatural belief. There is nothing supernatural about Spinoza's beliefs, and there are a ton of religious people. People who have religious practices, people who have beliefs that are non-supernatural, that were inspired by Spinoza's beliefs. This is a very, is very common among, there's a lot of, for example, there are a lot of atheist Jews who have a non-supernatural uh, view of the practices that they engage in. And it doesn't undermine the practices that they engage in. It doesn't undermine their religious beliefs. You just don't understand their religious beliefs. This, and it irritates me to no end how many atheists will will encounter a uh, another atheist. You know what I mean? A a person who doesn't believe in a supernatural god, but believes in the value of certain types of religious practice, and will treat them as though they are arguing with a Christian fundamentalist. And it's inc unbelievably cringe, unbelievably wasteful, and also just stupid and wrong. It is just flatly wrong and incorrect. And on top of that, it also means that there are a lot of atheists who do not understand, uh, how am I gonna do this? This is gonna be hard to structure. I wanna make sure that this is structured clearly. So not only do they not understand that there are types of God belief that do not involve a spiritual or that do not involve supernatural invocation, but also that there are different types of, um, there are that there are different types of practice of religion and that the practice of religion is different than a belief in the supernatural. So for example, um, yoga, okay? I'm gonna use an example of yoga and yoga has some problematic elements. There are a ton of yoga studios that are explicitly associated with cults. There are also a lot of yoga studios that are not. Yoga can be scientifically demonstrated to have a positive outlook or to have a positive effect on people's health and mental well-being. Why is that? Well, because as it turns out that practices which are not supernatural, um, uh, can actually have a, a huge positive effect on mental well-being, physical well-being, and all kinds of things. And a practice is separate from a supernatural claim. And yet tons of atheists will lump these things together. For another example that's not yoga, that's not even controversial at all, is meditation. Meditation comes in many forms. Some forms of meditation are definitively invoking supernatural practices. Some forms of meditation uh, involve saying that you are, uh, you know, you are bending the spirit world around you, that you are invoking the spiritual world. And other forms of meditation uh, si are simply a method by which you can focus your mind, your breathing, your existence. And some of those are religious in nature. Some of the practices that you involve, that you engage in, involve doing things that seem odd or that seem spiritual or that are spiritual. And spiritual doesn't necessarily always mean supernatural either. For example, um, let me give you an example of a uh, of a spiritual but not supernatural meditative practice that is used by many theater performers and actors. There is a, a 
practice that is done by many actors to help their mental health that is called de-rolling. There's other, people have other terms, um, unrolling, all kinds of things like that. And basically the idea is that after you do a performance, when you're in the back rooms or when you're in your home or whatever, you have a ritual that you do in which you are taking off the role that you played on the stage or the role that you played on the screen. And this mental practice helps you separate yourself from the difficulties of that task. Because as it turns out, acting is a lot of work and it can even be traumatizing depending on the type of acting that you're doing. If you are acting in an artistic performance that asks a lot of you, like what if you're acting in a film that depicts war crimes or, or rape or things like that, it can be very important that you separate yourself mentally from that. There is no way to take off a role. A role isn't a real thing. It is a construct of our mind. And the ritual, which is can be religious, the ritual of taking off the role is a purely mental and spiritual engagement that you do for your own well-being that can have positive effects. And yet it's not supernatural. But it is religious for some people. For some people, it's something they believe in and that they need for their well-being. It is important to them. Look at Heath Ledger, for example. Yeah, Heath Ledger, uh, many people say that the, the amount of the how hard he got into the role of the Joker and combined with the other things going on with his life was very taxing. <laughs> yeah, Jade Monkey says, Jade Monkey says, I have to play an evil, evil racist judge a lot on stage. Yeah, de-rolling might be pretty important from playing a evil character for something serious. So what's the difference between a craft and a religion? That's a very difficult question. But a lot of atheists won't even engage with it. They won't engage in in the in the topic. They will outhandedly just scoff and say, <laughs> "You think that uh, this that and the other supernatural thing, stupid stupid spiritualist?" And there's another thing. This is the next thing that I want to talk about that is a problem that I have with atheists um, in the modern era that I think is really cringe, which is that atheists, and this is especially targeted, okay? I don't care if you're an atheist who, who's not talking about it or whatever, but this is for the atheists who go out of their way to engage in conversations about atheism, who are public about their atheism, who talk about it, who are passionate about it, of which there are a lot. You guys don't understand how religion actually operates and how it plugs into the rest of the world. And this is where I'm really going to hit you guys hard. And I actually think that in some ways, this is not just damaging to, to the, the general, uh, uh, the general like view of atheism, but to the world as a whole. Okay, listen very closely. Christians go to church for a reason. And the Christian movement consolidates, the Christian movement I was talking about, the one you guys supposedly hate, the abusive one, the one that abused me and my family, okay? Those guys understand what people need to a certain degree. Now they attach it to all kinds of other things, but these churches for, excuse me, oh my goodness, I had a hiccup there. These churches flourish in rural areas where people are isolated, where people are poor, where people don't have a whole lot of prospects. They offer community, they offer practice, they offer an anchor of meaning, okay? The, the world in its current state severely struggles to, to give people any sense of meaning, okay? Our jobs are horrible. There's just been years and years of a brutal pandemic that left people isolated uh, in so many ways, 
in which tons of people died, tons of family members died, and a lot of those people were not even able to mourn their family members regularly because of the risk of the disease, okay? Uh, capitalism is consumer fixated and, and, and tells people that the only purpose that they have in life is to buy things and then die. There is a shocking uh, amount of isolation among old people. There is a shocking amount of isolation among poor people. People feel lost. They feel emotionally lost. They feel spiritually lost. They don't have anything to hold on to. They just feel like they're moving through a confusing, hurtful, painful world. And then religious people come along and promise them something. They promise them community. They promise them meaning. They promise them safety. And in exchange, they consolidate political power. And atheists, these people who go out of their way to talk about atheism, to smugly flex um, over, over all of the believers of all types that they flex over, do not understand this. They just don't. They don't get it. They don't understand what is what what the religious the religious extremists not even just religious extremists what any religious person can offer to a person who feels that way which is a lot of people and guess what a lot of these atheists feel that way too which is why they've made atheism their identity because atheism gives them a sense of meaning even though they use it stupidly just like a whole bunch of the Christians do. A lot of these politically, and, and this is a, a the, I have this biggest problem with lefty leaning atheist types that are, that I, I keep winnowing down, but the, the public atheists who consider themselves leftists and simply do not understand that all they're doing is scoffing. They're sitting on social media and they're scoffing while the world burns while the world burns because they don't even understand why uh, conservatives and conservative Christians and fundamentalists and Christian nationalists are able to win people over, why hyper-conservative um, Muslim groups are able to win people over. And I don't mean win people over like in the battlefield of ideas. I mean why they're able to continue onward, why they're able to still grow their numbers despite the fact that they're detestable and they're miserable to be around. And the answer is because they offer people a sense of meaning in a world that is bereft of a lot of meaning. They offer people community in a world that has been systemically decommunized. Uh, lefties, Lefty atheists will talk about the, the removal of the third place. They'll talk about the removal of the public uh, commons. They'll talk about how people don't have anywhere to go but work. They'll talk about how work is exploitative and isolating. And then they'll wonder why someone might cling to the abusive religion that their parents raised them in. Christians in America... Um, one of the most pop I've been doing a ton of research lately Because I wanted to see if it was still the same as when I was in the church because when I was in the church one of the one of the biggest Ways in which the churches would grow was through the prison ministry and the second biggest was through the rehab ministry Christian churches especially the extremist ones in America target church uh, target prisons and they target uh, people who are trying to get out of drugs because these are two people uh, two types of people who are most likely uh, to be lacking in community to be people who have been isolated and hurting for a long period of time they target them and they offer them the things that they need the most in their heart a sense that it's going to be okay that they're going to have a community around them that there is a future for them and they give it to them when no one else will or when it seems like no one else will. Where are the lefty atheists fixing that problem? Where are these outspoken, scoffing lefty atheists uh, going and helping ensure that people leaving prison 
uh, aren't just damned forever to be homeless, to be miserable and alone. Where are all the lefty Reddit atheists scoffing on Twitter.com, uh, helping recovering addicts find a, a community, find a promise, find work, a job, a future, anything? Where are they? They're nowhere. Movement atheism failed, but all of the scoffing atheists on social media behave like it succeeded. It didn't. Movement atheism never, it didn't work. It could have worked. It, it has risks. It could have worked, but it didn't. And now there's just a bunch of smug, scoffing, self-important atheists all over the place. Again, just tweeting while the world burns. Varnish Eater says, it's so hard to find resources if you're poor or homeless that aren't religious based. Before I became a streamer, I went through a period of intense poverty. It wasn't the first time I've been very poor in my life. I have been very poor at multiple points in my life, and there have also been chapters of my life where I was doing okay. This is a chapter of my life where I'm doing okay, partially because of this show. Thank you all who support me. This is a viewer supported show. I don't have sponsorships or anything like that. I just get viewer support. So thank you for supporting me. Um, you make it possible for me to not be poor. But before I became a streamer, I was very poor. You want to know where I got the most of my food? From a Christian food bank. And the Christian food bank, they offered to pray with us. And we accepted. Even though I was an atheist, I accepted. I don't believe in God. I didn't believe in God. They didn't ask me to believe in God. But they were offering, and I mean they were offering a lot of food, okay? More food than I could get anywhere else. And you could go there every month and get a huge stack of food to last you the month. They would give you take-home pizzas. They would give you jars of peanut butter and soup and sodas and all kinds of stuff. And they would, and an old lady would kindly ask if she could pray for you. Where are all these smug movement atheists doing that type of shit? Well, they don't. They sit on the internet and they act like fucking liberals. They say, you should vote for Biden, and, and they say stupid, meaningless crap while people are fucking suffering and while churches are, are, are pulling people in, some of them very abusive. Isn't that just devastating isn't that just fucking harrowing it literally makes me want to cry like i i'm i'm sorry i'm just thinking about that time of my life makes me fucking crazy emotional because um we wouldn't have eaten if it wasn't for that This is why I get so mad at atheists. This is why I get so fucking mad at, at these internet fucking posers, these smug comment warriors. They piss me off. And it's also why I get just so tired of this back and forth conversation around atheism. And also why I get so mad, this is a specific critique, why I get so mad at the weird position that atheism has on the left the left okay there are a lot of people who act as though uh, atheism is a fundamental part of of leftism um who uh who do make the left extremely toxic for people who have religious beliefs even even people who have non-supernatural religious beliefs and they don't even understand it um i think it's a huge problem i think it's a massive problem like uh, I, I think it's a systemic level problem with the uh, with the left that I think that the left is going to have to grapple with because um, because the 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 far right um, is brutal in its politics, but it's material in its politics, um, at least with regard to how churches operate. A lot of their talking heads, you know, live in a complete fantasy world, 
But um, the church that I grew up in, that cult is still going strong. It's still got tons of members. It has an entire community under its control. And they are, they are, they bring their following into extremism. They recruit them via the, via prisons and rehab programs. And they convince them that the way to, to, to make the world a better place is to believe that Donald Trump is the next, is the best president to believe that gay people are evil. And they show them, they show them that their worldview is true. It's not actually true, but they show them a truth by offering them what they need, by giving them what they need, by seeking these people out and giving them food and giving them clothes. And, and yet on the internet, people are fucking being brutal and cruel to avowed leftists who happen to hold religious beliefs. Like I'm talking hardcore leftists, people who are in practice uh, as left as you can be, but happen to hold a religious belief. And these smug atheist fucking keyboard warriors will be like, you don't belong in my movement, <laughs> Christ tard. It's terrible. And yeah, uh, as Moss says, I feel like they try to be cruel, but they come off as insanely annoying. Well, yeah, most of the time they just come off as cringe and insanely annoying, but sometimes they really hurt people. Like sometimes there's some severe pain going on and not just the kind of, huh, I hurt your feelings, Christ cuck. No, it's the type of thing where like a person who has religious beliefs is desperately trying to communicate what makes those beliefs valuable to them. And this like atheist is just like, no, you're an idiot. I will never build a coalition with you. And I've seen a lot of people, this was one of the things that, that, that prompted me wanting to talk about this was a lot of people pushing the idea that like atheism is like a provable claim no it fucking isn't if you're an atheist and you believe that you can prove a negative you are literally just as irrational as a christian your belief system of atheism is an acknowledgement that there is no meaningful evidence for god and until that evidence shows up that you should not believe in god it's not the idea that you can prove god doesn't exist doesn't atheism require faith? I don't think that atheism in its base form requires faith, but the atheism that is practiced by a lot of people online does require faith. It requires faith that there will never be evidence of a God, which you can't know that. And that's a faith claim. But I don't think that in its basic form, atheism requires any sort of faith. It's simply an acknowledgement that you have not seen evidence um, and uh, and that you have a burden of proof necessary to prove the existence of God, which I think is a very rational and fair thing to do. Uh, people make ridiculous claims about God. I mean, cri the, the Christian fundamentalists believe God is like all an all-powerful male entity that has a physical form that came to earth, and they don't provide any meaningful evidence about that. Yeah. I think that it's really fucking weird when atheists start to be behave um, like like theists. I think it's very, very weird. Rapti with the $5 says, your shameless love of birds has helped me get fellow bird lovers to watch you. Empathy connects people. One of my friends loves chickens so much and we've bonded even more over them. That's based, I love birds and I love other bird fans. I am a bird lover. I'd be a bird if I could. You know, it'd be cool to be a bird. I bet I bet living as a bird would be sick. Rule, the open sky is free to you. Man, it'd be cool. Um, but to, to get back on the topic of atheism, um, I don't, I, I, I don't believe uh, in God. 
I'm an atheist. I think I've made that very clear. That said, um, I think that 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 atheists in general, but especially the left as a whole, could do with a better understanding of religion to do with especially a better understanding of religious practice. Can I give you guys a real quick example of, um, of a religious practice by a spiritual movement that I think is incredibly, incredibly based? Um, Sikh temples. There's a there's a uh, there's a religion called Sikhism or Sikhism. I always mispronounce it right, but Sikh temples have a religious practice, which is that um, when they have sessions of worship, um, uh, when they have sessions of worship, they always serve a meal, always. So every uh, uh, every you know religious session has a meal. And the important part about this is that it is a part of their belief that this meal be made free to anyone. Uh, uh, regardless of whether you believe in God, regardless of whether you belong to the church community. And you can actually go to any Sikh temple during a, uh, a religious, uh, a, a religious uh, ceremony and you can receive a plate of food, no questions asked. And that is a core part of their belief system. And that is a, Sikhism is a spiritual, supernatural religion, is a religion that has supernatural claims. But that practice, I think we can agree, is a pretty impressively good pr t uh, practice. And that practice doesn't have to be tied to the belief of Sikhism, does it? That could be done by anybody. That could be done by a local uh, 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 DSA group. That could be done by a anarchist mutual aid group. That could be done by the Democrats. Could make it that, could make it make something like that. Anybody could do that. In fact, some do. I will say there are some uh, that do that. And yet, that is a practice that comes from a religious belief. There is a religious motivation for it. And it's not even a bad re religious motivation. What I'm trying to say here is that uh, practices have all kinds of reasons and motivations. And God belief in and of itself does not really have that much of an impact um, on whether or not something turns out to be good or bad. In fact, it's more the motivation of the practice itself that has a lot more impact. There's another image online, um, which is, uh, there is a, this one went around a little while ago and it was a, uh, a restaurant, um, and it had a sign that said it had all of the prices and at the bottom it said, uh, if you do not have enough money, this meal is on Allah. And what it meant is if you were hungry and you don't have the money, they would, they would donate that meal to you in the name of God. God belief, the motivation for that is a belief that, that their God wants them to make the world a better place. The God belief, not really the problem there, is it? Is the God belief tainting that behavior? Really? I think that that God belief is tainting the behavior less than a lot of smug atheist liberals who don't give food away because they think it would hurt their bottom line. There's a lot of smug atheist liberals who are also capitalists. There are a lot of smug atheist liberals uh, who are uh, economically conservative. They're getting lapped by a God believer whose God belief motivates them to be charitable. When Vontuk says with the $10, thank you very much for supporting the show. Vontuk says, when I give money in need or uh, when I give someone in need money or gas, if they say God bless, I let them know that I'm an atheist, but that I appreciate their positive sentiment. I think this is a really good way to spread the word that atheists aren't evil and can be kind. I think that's based.
I think that's totally based. If you're looking for an atheist charity, the skeptic podcasters at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm do vulgarity for charity, where if you donate to modest needs, they roast a person of your choosing. That sounds great, Zafra Fennec. There you go. There's some people putting their money where their mouth is. Killjoy says, a huge thing that needs to be understood is that when you remove the church, you have to replace all of the needs that they provide for. Food kitchens, hospitals, orphanages, thrift stores. Christians donate 10% of their revenue to support a community, which is way more than any of these Redditors. Yeah, um, I don't think that they have to be identical structures, but the needs do have to be replaced. They do. And that's one of the big problems of, of, ath of movement atheism. Because movement atheism, atheism isn't a movement. Atheism is a fucking neutral belief. You either believe in God or you don't. Do you see what I'm talking about here? Uh, atheism isn't good and based and red-pilled and true. It's just a thing. You either do believe in God or you don't. And you might have good reasons for doing so or you might have bad reasons for doing so. I personally think that a good argument can be made for atheism. But it's just atheism. Everything, it doesn't give you a shortcut to being a better person. The rest of your worldview comes from that. Movement atheism doesn't work. I mean, I guess it could have, but it would have required an understanding of what a movement really is. It would have come, it would have required an understanding of shared beliefs. It would have taken on a religious nature. But atheists are allergic to understanding that type of human connection. Especially right now they are. But I think that's a huge mistake. What do you think of this statement? Why do you need a book to teach you how to be morally good? Lots of people need books to teach them how to be morally good. Lots of people need books. Are you kidding me? I feel like I needed books to teach me how to be morally good. Uh, people read books for all kinds of reasons. Books are knowledge. Knowledge helps us reflect and learn things we wouldn't have otherwise learned. Being a good person doesn't happen by accident, especially in a world where you're taught all kinds of fucked up things from birth. Do you know how many people have stopped being racist because they read a book that challenged them to rethink their racist positions that their parents taught them? One of the most cringe arguments is the whole if the only thing stopping you from doing bad things is God, then you're not a good person. Um, I can understand why people say that. Um, but people use all kinds of structures. You know, the same thing could be said about an ideology. This is another thing. Not to, not to go off on yet another tangent, but this is another thing that drives me nuts about atheists. Atheists suddenly zip up the moment that they the moment that they're confronted with the fact that ideology can make people behave exactly like religiosity Like Stalinists are you fucking kidding me? Stalinism was an atheistic movement That was so ideologically controlled that it mirrored even the most heinous practices of religion over over history like ideologies can function in the exact same ways. They build constructs. They uh, they encourage people to to see others as uh, morally less than or 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 greater than. It's pseudo religious, yeah. But suit, but but you can't just say it's pseudo religious and end it there, right? A lot of atheists will be like, oh, it was basically a religion, but it wasn't liberalism has led oh my god are you guys you know the types of shit that that has happened under purely atheistic liberalism you think that every corporation that has uh, like hollowed out a country in africa or in south south america is run by like a devout christian Nah, -uh. no it fucking isn't it's led by a council of people who are motivated by fucking cash what I'm, there's so much that I'm trying to communicate here. One of which is there's no shortcuts to a better understanding of the world. The world is a complicated and difficult place. 
and there are a lot of ways to live your life and there are a lot of ways to be a bad person and there are a lot of ways to be a good person and there are a lot of different definitions of what it means to be good or bad. There's no shortcuts to this stuff. You have to think about it really deeply. You have to really interrogate it and you have to be willing to be critical to the things that you assumed. This is ridiculously based. It's it's like no one else talks about this. Well, I'm not trying to say that I'm insanely awesome and based and that you should tell your friends about me and promote my show, that you should leave comments on my videos so that my channel gets out there to more people. But I'm kind of saying that I'm pretty based and I've thought about this stuff a lot and it would be really, really cool if you shared this show with other people uh, because I'm going to be doing more content like this. Um, this topic specifically talking about religion, talking about atheism is going to be something I talk about a lot more on my show, uh, cause I think it's necessary. I really think it's necessary. Um, practices are very important to humans generally habits, um, the things that we do, the ways that we live our lives. And um, those practices are, as it turns out, super, super, super important. And some of them are religious in nature, and some of the religious ones are actually good. And atheists could probably learn a thing or two from some religious people who do really good stuff. They could learn a lot from that. And they don't a lot of times simply because they will smugly say, God believes stupid. And again, I want to be 100% clear. Um, I have nothing but critiques uh, for modern Christianity, for the Christian movement, evangelical Christian movement, the Christian nationalism movement, fundamentalism, whatever. They're all one big lump in America. I have nothing but critiques for them. I think they should be critiqued viciously. But I don't think that you, I don't think it's about their God belief. I don't think that it's God belief uh, that that is what makes them bad. Even though there's aspects of their God belief that I think are worthy of mocking. Like, I mean, I mock the transubstantiation thing. Specifically, I mock that because it, because uh, like a lot of the people who are pushing that thing forward are also trying to say that trans people are irrational and 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 uh and are all you know, you're you're always gonna be a woman slash man depending on whatever and then they're like yeah but this bread is definitely jesus you know do you think that religion encourages people to think irrationally i think some religion does but i don't think all religion does like for example I don't think Judaism encourages people to think irrationally at all. In fact, I think Judaism, uh, 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 like huge chunks of Judaism are obsessed with rationality. They are, it's like a, a massive part of, uh, of, of a lot of religious beliefs to be rational, to be scientific, to inquire about the world. So I don't think so. I don't think religion intrinsically encourages people to be irrational. I think some types of religions do. For example, I think evangelical Christianity does encourage people to be irrational. I think Christian fundamentalism unbelievably convinces people and encourages people to be irrational. But I don't think that religion as a whole does. Um, I don't think Buddhism, uh, maybe some forms of Buddhism, but I don't think Buddhism as a whole generally encourages people to be irrational. And that, in fact, I think a lot of the core teachings of Buddhism are about mindfulness, um, about paying attention to the world around you and the connections that you have to the world around you, thinking about them, uh, uh, attempting to, to separate your mind from the world around you so that you can observe it and think about it. Yes, obviously there are some branch, obviously, this, that's what I'm saying, there are some branches of most religions that are extreme and very violent, but I don't think that a lot of these do. I don't even know if Christianity at its core. I do think that there are aspects of the core of Christian belief, um, but I don't even think that I can say that about Christianity as a whole, because there have been, throughout history, countless Christians 
who felt motivated to inquire about the world because of their religious beliefs. They exist to this day. So I just don't think that I can agree with a statement like that. Yeah, of course, there's a huge Christian Marxist movement, liberation theology, Christian socialism. Holy moly. Sonny Joe with the unbelievably generous $100 super chat. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much it means to me that you'd support me like that. Thank you so very much. Sonny Joe says, from another recovered Reddit atheist, everything you're saying is so true. Uh, completely true. Got some extra money recently, so please enjoy. I will absolutely enjoy that. Thank you very, very much. Seriously, you mean the world to me. Thank you so much. My goodness, that's generous. Thank you so very much. That really means a lot to me. Lotta Apple says, Michael Brooks was, uh, was doing... Uh, was was combining spirituality components with leftism right before he passed away. That is something that 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 uh, Michael Brooks took seriously, and I've I always respected Michael Brooks a lot. I always did, and he was one of the funniest. He was one of the funniest and harshest critics of what he called the dumb dumb left, which was the left that ended up spiraling off into. Uh, this anti-Ukraine craziness, this uh, this weird reactionary craziness, all of the uh, the weird class reductionists. There we go. Sophie says, I'm really enjoying this nuanced discussion because in so many leftist spaces, especially online, this kind of nuance is, nuance is almost anathema and it's incredibly frustrating. The, demonstra the demonization sorry, of religious people inherently turns away so many people who could otherwise be progressive or leftist. The same goes with LGBT people who are still religious and are rejected by both communities and, are th and then are further isolated. True! That is very true. There is an incredible amount of um, isolation that can occur. Um, this this sort of uh, smug Reddit atheism being popular on the left actually seriously damages the move the, the general left movement. It, it it damages the entire general left space because it's leaving a ton of people. Uh, out of the movement entirely and I'm not saying that you need to incorporate Christian morality into leftism but this this the the popularity of sort of smugly uh, acting morally superior just because you think that your atheism is somehow so enlightened it does damage it actually is damaging prosy Rosie says if you had to join a religion which one speaks to you the most uh, Judaism um, with basically like an almost no hesitation. I have actually considered at one point, the only time I have ever like considered getting involved with a religion, uh, was, um, was, I was considering going to a, uh, a trans Jewish leftist reading group, um, and learning about, uh, conversion to a, uh, to a sort of uh, pantheistic form of Judaism. Yeah, but that is the most, the, the type of religion that most appeals to me, if I had to choose a religion right now. Um, but again, I just prefer to remain m myself independent, and I prefer to be able to analyze belief systems and their beliefs independent of adopting one in whole. Yep. Unitarian Universalist practices are about what you're saying here tonight. Yeah, the Unitarian Unitarian Universalists are pretty based, all things considered. Um, they're 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 really incredible. In fact, um, Unitarian Universalists uh, are they often um, are the places that queer groups are able to get like resources and space uh, to meet up. Um, lots and lots of like queer support groups will meet at Unitarian Universalist church facilities because of how supportive Unitarian Universalists are. It's pretty interesting.
What do you think about Wicca? I don't know all that much about Wicca. Uh, I only know a little bit about it. I know a lot of Wiccans who are pretty cool, um, but I don't know all that much myself. It's one of the ones I don't, I admittedly don't know as much about. The Unitarian Universalists were the first to perform same-sex marriages? Yes, they were. The Unitarian Universalists uh, were like the only place you could, you could get married in a church for a while. Uh, yeah, uh, Naomi Chance, shoot me a friend request. I'll check my friend requests on, uh, Discord. And, uh, shoot, shoot me a, uh, shoot me a message. Or you can email me at demonmamaonline at gmail.com. Email is also very, uh, very easy. Sophie says, Judaism puts heavy emphasis on education and discussion. Like one of the oldest Jewish sayings is, if you have a room of 100 Jews, you have 100 different Judaisms. Yep. Yep, it's absolutely true. Um, yep, it's very, very uh, uh, scholarship, uh, debate, um, differences of opinion are very valued in a lot of Judaism and a lot of uh, uh, Ju Ju Jewish communities. Okay, I want to wrap this segment off by saying uh, one final thing, which is something that I've said on this channel that I will continue to say, which is that my, my criticisms of religion tend to come from the following things. Dogmatism. I think that dogmatism is a type of belief system that is toxic. I don't believe that you need to have a belief in God in order to be dogmatic. This is one of the things I'm most critical of. I believe that dogmatic belief, unquestioning belief to a set of principles that have been taught to you by someone else or have been left in a book is incredibly dangerous. Uh, I think it's highly, highly dangerous. Traditionalism, specifically capital T traditionalism. I'm not talking about having any traditions. I'm talking about traditionalism. The belief that what came before uh, has some sort of inherent magical quality, that there is something inherently valuable about the way things were done in the past over the way that things are being done now, that, that just because something has been repeated for a long time that that's right, I think that is a very, very uh, dangerous um, uh, 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 belief uh, like a, a piece of belief that is present in, in many religions, uh, but is not present in all religions. Also, not God belief. Traditionalism and dogmatism are not tied to God belief necessarily. Sometimes they are, but they are not always. Um, those are two of the biggest ones. Um, uh, and I think uh, uh, along the same lines, um, conservatism, or right-wingism is another one uh, that I think is uh, highly suspect and that should be watched out for. These are the, the characteristics that like sort of characterize my skepticism of a lot of belief system, uh, a lot of belief systems. And I want to be clear what I mean by conservatism slash right-wingism. Um, I mean the belief that the world is divided into naturally existing hierarchies that are unquestionable. Now you might argue this is a subsection of dogmatism, but I think that it deserves being uh, carried out, that being brought up nonetheless. I think that religious beliefs, uh, ideological beliefs that teach you that there are people who are above and there are people who are below and there are people who have a, you have a specific place in a hierarchy are highly dangerous, highly likely to lead people to very immoral behavior. Um, and, uh, those are the ones that I tend to focus on. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and I guess anti-skepticism in general, uh, if a belief is telling you not to inquire further about it, if there is a ideological or religious belief that is telling you, uh, do not question this, do not dig into this. But again, that kind of falls under dogmatism. Personally, I find dogmatism and traditionalism to be two of the most, those are the things that I'm actually concerned with. The, not the God belief, 
not even the belief necessarily in the supernatural, because I think lots of people believe in supernatural things in very harmless ways or in very low harm ways, uh, or they have uh, reasons, even if perhaps misguided sometimes for their supernatural beliefs, whatever. I don't think that those are the ones that are important. I think that watching out for dogmatism, watching out for traditionalism, um, and of course, uh, watching out generally for uh, uh, the type of be isolating behavior that a lot of cults engage in. Um, obviously, um, that's sort of a key component of what defines a cult in most people's mind is the idea uh, of, of isolating people from everyone else, keeping them only to the in-group. Uh, in-group versus out-group thinking is another one that I think people should be very cautious about. Um, obviously, there is always a certain amount of in-group preference. That is, uh, we all have biases. We all are, are biased to some degrees to what we know more. Um, but I think that re religious beliefs or ideological beliefs that encourage you to distrust those who are different than you and to implicitly trust those who are similar to you are very, very dangerous. Belzebub, with the incredibly generous tier one sub, says, keep spitting facts. Hope that you delve further into the connections between religion and state power. Super interesting, in my opinion. I absolutely will. Uh, that is a topic that I will most definitely be talking about in the future. Um, one big question is, is that I have is, how do you differentiate religions and cults? Atheists tend to call all religion cults anyways. Um... I think that sometimes it can be hard, but in my opinion, what defines a cult, um, what defines a cult is uh, is, uh, a, is is certain practices that are designed to isolate the be the believer from the outside world. Um, tons of religions do not do not teach you. Uh, uh, even lots of Christianity does not teach you um, to like isolate yourself from other people who are different than you. Um, there are a lot of strains of Christianity that do delve into this, and those are the ones that I would argue are cults. Um, I think that cults also tend to have very firm um, membership, uh, punitive membership uh, uh, behaviors. So not only do cults encourage isolation, but they encourage isolation by basically um, excluding you if you associate with the wrong people. Uh, basically saying like, oh, if you, uh, you know, if you don't spend enough time with us and you're spending time with other people that we don't like, um, that, uh, that that's like, a, that's also a, a red flag. Um, and uh, also, uh, I, I think that uh, the level of devotion that is demanded uh, also uh, can, uh, can help distinguish a cult. I don't think that there's a hard line. Um, usually because i think that there are um some sincerely held uh, religious beliefs that require an incredible amount of devotion but lots of cults uh demand basically uh in my like most of the cults things that i would be comfortable calling cults demand you give over your entire life to the belief system usually to a specific a specific part of the belief system not just giving yourself over to the religion as a whole but giving yourself over to the specific church or the specific leader or the specific sect um is usually something that i would say helps define a cult um the bite model is a good a good checklist yeah a lot of people um use the bite model um i do think that's a pretty good model generally i'm just sort of going off the cuff for what i usually think of and what I look to personally to determine the difference between a cult and a, just a general religious practice. Most of the things that I would be comfortable calling a cult are uh, there is a, a specific leader or a small group of leaders who you must be devoted to and you must be loyal to. Not just a belief system, not just an abstract God or even a, even a specific God, but rather a group of people that you are supposed to be loyal to at all times. What is bite here? Let me bring it up. I'll get you bite. Here we go. The bite model, uh, the Stephen Hassan's bite model of authoritarian control. 
behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. Now there's a whole lot of details here about here, but we can look at just a couple of them. Uh, uh, behavior control, regulating the individual's physical reality, dictating where, how, and with whom the member lives, associates, or isolates, when, how, and with whom the member has sex, control of types of clothing and hairstyle, regulate diet, food, drink, hunger, and or fasting, manipulation and deprivation of sleep, financial exploitation, manipulation or dependence, restricting leisure, entertainment, or vacation time, major time spent with group indoctrination and rituals and or self indoctrination including the internet permission required for all major major decisions rewards and punishments used to modify behaviors both positive and negative discouraging individualism encouraging groupthink so there's some examples of behavior control informational control deception withholding information distorting information to make it more acceptable systemically lying to the cult member um, minimizing or discouraging access to non-cult sources of information. Hey, I talked about that a ton. Do you see why I, I mentioned this when I was talking about the cult I grew up in? That was a huge part. Internet, TV, radio, books, articles, newspapers, magazines, media, critical information, restricting access to former members. That was a big deal in my old, in my, in the cult that I was in. If somebody left the church, they were gone. They just disappeared from the social group. If they left the church, they were immediately suspect and you were not supposed to engage with them. It was frowned upon to spend time with them. Uh, they were often uh, disparaged by other members of the church. Compartmentalize information into outsider versus insider doctrines. Ensure that information is not freely accessible. Control information at different levels and missions within the group. Allow only the leadership to decide who needs to know what and when. Encourage spying on other members. Extensive use of information and propaganda generated by the cult, including internal newsletters, magazines, videotapes, audio tapes, YouTube, movies, other media. Misquoting statements or using them out of context from non-cult sources. Unethical use of confession. Withholding forgiveness or absolution. Thought control, require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth, adopting the group's map of reality as the true reality, instill black and white thinking, decide between good and evil, organize people into us versus them. See, do you see why these are the things that I tend to focus on when I'm talking about my critiques of specific religions and not God belief? Notice that like basically none of this actually requires God belief. Yeah, here's the linky. This is just a this is just a general summary. This isn't like the perfect. I'm not saying this is like the definitive one. This is just a general summary that I grabbed. Emotional control. Make a person feel that problems are always their own fault, never the fault of the group or the leader. Promote feelings of guilt or unworthiness, identity guilt. Hmm not living up to your potential, your family is deficient, your past is suspect, your affirmations are, or your affiliations are unwise, your thoughts, feelings, and actions are irrelevant, social guilt, historical guilt. That was a huge one in the cult that I grew up in, something I deal with still to this day. Uh, how much guilt was wielded. Guilt was wielded so hard in the church that I grew up in. Uh, like I said, it's a permanent, it's like a, a, a permanent scar dealing with feelings of guilt for everything, for every action. It got so bad at one point in my life that I would have, um, that I would become paralyzed even at simple decisions because I didn't know which one God wanted me to make. This is when I was a lot younger. It actually manifested almost as like an obsessive compulsive thing where I would freeze making decisions about clothing or what I was going to eat for breakfast or what homework I was supposed to do first because the church was constantly reinforcing the idea that I needed to consult God for everything, that I needed to constantly be in communion with God. Anyway, this has gotten off topic and I want to wrap this segment up. Um, what I'm trying to say is uh, atheists online have cultivated a very deserving reputation of being incredibly cringe. 
Um, it, out, loud, out and loud atheists need to do way, way better. And the left should seriously reanalyze its approach uh, on how it handles interacting with religious people because it's one of the biggest areas that the world is is like at threat. If Christian fundamentalists continue to consolidate their power, continue to recruit uh, people into their ranks via whatever method that they use, usually it's believe it or not, it's not even their it's not their internet evangelism that does it. It's that they target people at their material needs. But if that's allowed to happen, we face a very dark future because I unironically believe that these Christian nationalists will stop at no level of violence or torture in order to um, to force their worldview, a worldview in which they categorically believe that gay people does, do not deserve to exist, that trans people do not deserve to exist. I mean, we just watched uh, some of their uh, Christian popular talking heads like uh like candace owens explicitly calling trans people uh satanic which they believe is the ultimate evil i think that the online left atheists in the online left and people who care about these topics seriously seriously need to rethink the way that they engage um and i'm doing my part by having conversations like this one. If you enjoyed this segment, this video, depending on whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching it in the future on YouTube, please, please press subscribe down below, press like, and tell me your thoughts in the comments. I really want to hear your thoughts about religion. I really want to hear your thoughts about atheism. Um, if you are a, a, a religious leftist, I want to hear your thoughts, seriously. Leave them in the comments below. I read my comments very frequently. All of my fans can tell you I respond all the time. So uh, maybe I should read my comments less, but I don't. So leave those comments. It means the world to me. Helps my videos, and it also means that we get to talk. So thank you all very much.